Yeah, uh, yes, thanks, Bulia. You said what was, shouldn't there have been a prompt response when the letter was leaked? The, the letter, as I said, was an internal communication, but it was by no means meant to be secret. So we can't say it has leaked, only that it has landed in the hands of people for which it was not meant, and of course they misunderstood it. We don't really regard that as a leak. That's the point we are making. And as I said, the, the, the memo was written in December. And the accusations were in January. And early in February, I tried, when I realized this thing is becoming serious, I tried to clarify it, as I said. During my debate, I had a slot uh, during the debate of the State of the Nation Address. Secondly, the question was asked again during the oral uh, replies of the JCPS. If you understand parliamentary processes, when a question has been asked, there are follow-up questions, but they must be relevant to the original question. This was not relevant and in terms of the law. I was not forced to answer it, but because of the nature of this, I did respond to it, emphasize again about the nature of this secular and exactly what must happen. So the second question is about who leaked it, Bule. We don't really regard this as a leak because we're not dealing with secrecy. Uh, the issue of whether there was a high response of people uh, renewing their visas, they do that all the time. That's why I said they, they, perhaps the, the secular was not necessary. People renew their visas. It's in the act. And, and maybe let me explain because it's not in the statement here. When you visit South Africa on a visitor's visa, you have got 90 days. That is what is called visa free. You have got 90 days. And we know that there are countries that fall within that category. In Europe, 44 countries come to South Africa visa free. In Asia, 20 countries come to South Africa visa free. On the African continent, 36 countries also come to South Africa visa free. That include the whole of SADC, of course, with the exception of the DRC, which in many SADC countries have not been given visa free, but that's a story for another day. In North America, 19 countries can also come to South Africa visa free. That include the US, Canada, and many other big countries. In South America, 11 countries can come here visa free. And in Oceania, it's three countries. Now, when you say you are coming here visa free as a visa and a tourist, it means you are given 90 days. In terms of the act, you can extend that if you so wish by another 90 days to make it 180 days, after which there is no provision in the act for a further uh, 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 extension. There is no provision. And such people will have to automatically leave the country. There was no need for a secular to remind them that they must leave on the 29th of February, which sort of raised temperatures when leaving after uh, uh, your days allocated days are over. It's standard. Some of you have been to countries like US. They go to an extent because they've got systems we don't have, or phoning you in your hotel and told you that, no, you are supposed to have left today or yesterday. Please leave. You came here on a visit and all that. You know. So that's standard. And that's why we thought maybe a circular should not be issued. But as I explained, there was a thinking that we've got new people at the borders which might not know and it might actually frustrate people. Uh, so, so people extend their visas all the time, even the so-called swallows. Now, when you said your days are finished in the country, when you are countries, you come from a country that is visa-free, it doesn't mean you can't come to South Africa. It means you can come, but then you are required to apply for a visa, like people who are not visa-free, which means you start paying money, and wasting time, etc. The issue of visa free is that it saves you money and you just wake up 
and say, I'm going to such and such a country because it's visa-free. You may remember that we used to be visa-free in, 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 in the UK. A South African could just wake up any time and rush to the UK. That's no longer the case. We have to apply for visas because the UK complained when our passport was being defrauded. And that's why we taking that matter of defrauding our, our passport very seriously. So I just want to explain various mechanisms about the, how the issue of visas go, how people renew and all that. So there was nothing new basically, uh, except the fact that we, it was thought that there are new people who might not know these things. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, yes. Ule, why am, not, am I not surprised? You guys in the media will love the ZEP, man. Hey. <laughs> Even if it's not in my presentation. Yes, we, uh, we've been given a chance to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal. We cherish that uh, very much because we wanted the courts to clarify certain things which, if not clarified, we believe will cause a lot of problems in the country and will cause a lot of unwanted precedents. So we are looking forward. And as you know, you are right when you say the problem is not over. Uh, in this matter, Bule, in this matter, uh, we really want the Constitutional Court on all the issues to, 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 to pronounce mm -hmm. itself so that we know if we indeed wrong and the other people were right. But before that, we'll remain in the dark and we'll navigate in the dark most of the time and there will be trouble. So we really want these matters to be clarified in the courts once and for all. Thank you very much.